Hey digital fam, my name is John D. Saunders and you're now watching The Digital Block. Hey guys, I hope all is well. I apologize for the delay. My wife and I would just welcomed our baby boy, Logan, into the world. So I've really been focusing on client work and hanging out with him. There's a little pic of him. <laughs> Love that little guy. So I wanted to jump back into it to keep providing you guys value on a consistent basis. So I was working on something for a client and I figured this would be something great to share with you guys where what you could do is you could actually take your email list of individuals and pinpoint your key demographic. So for example, if you're an e-commerce store and you have 500 customers, you wanna kinda of break down the demographic, right? You wanna know uh, what, how many are male, how many are female, how much money they make, what kind of Facebook pages they have affinity towards. So what we're going to do is we're gonna use audience insights like we have in an earlier video and go ahead and leverage that. That way you can use your email list to pull that data, find out your key demographic and then you can create some ads based on that buyer persona so i'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process we're going to jump in right now okay guys so let's break down this process of using audience insights to pinpoint potential buyers now if you're not familiar with what audience insights is we've done a video prior you can click the link in the upper right hand corner to get specifics on that essentially what audience insights does is it breaks down demographics or groups on facebook telling you all the information about that group of people. So for example, the people that follow the page Apple on Facebook, it will tell you the makeup of the page. So it'll tell you on average how many male and females there are, their page affinity, the biggest locations, how much money they make, the purchases they make, just tons and tons of info. So I wanted to go through this five step process really quickly so you guys can get a thorough understanding and then we'll jump into it on my computer as well. So one, you wanna upload your email list to audiences so it's available on Audience Insights. We'll show you how to do that, it's super easy. You can either export your MailChimp, your constant contact list, and upload that directly to Facebook. Facebook will cross-reference all that information and it'll give you um, email addresses. A lot of times, if you're gonna upload, for example, 100, it'll give you around 40 to 60% of those converted emails. Now, step two, we're gonna use that audience to assess your current database, customers, and leads Step three, we're gonna use the insights to create buyer personas based on data. And we're gonna go do that real time. Then you can go ahead and create segmented audiences and test. And then if your data set is too small, so you want at least 20 people, 20 people is not a great number to get some really good um, potential buyer personas from. However, what you could do is if, you're, if your list is pretty small, you can create a lookalike audience. Essentially, if your list is 20 people, you can cr increase that audience by doing a lookalike audience. Facebook will look at the attributes of those 20 people and try and find people similar on their platform so you can grow that list to about a million or two million people with similar attributes. Then rinse and repeat. So let me just go ahead and dive into one of our accounts. This is for one of our clients. We've just created a few audiences to test to show you guys. Um, so here we have a users that have visited the website in the last 180 days. So we're gonna use that as our list. Now, if you need to upload your email list, all you're gonna do is hit this, hit custom audience, do customer file, add customers from your own file or import from MailChimp, either one is fine. Once you do that, you're gonna upload your file. You most likely wanna do it in CSV or TXT format. Once it uploads, it'll give you the information that it provides. You just hit next and then complete. When it's done, it'll show something like this where it will say lookalike audience, the size of the audience, and um, if it's available or not. A lot of times if you upload it, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to start showing data. So you wanna do that as quickly as possible just so you can do that and have that information waiting for you. Now, now that that's there, we're set, right? So if you're in Facebook Ad Manager, you're gonna go into the upper left-hand corner and you're actually gonna go to Audience Insights. So now we're, we've passed the upload email list. Now we're going to assess our current audience and then break down their demo, which is really great stuff. So if I go there, I'm gonna do a custom audience because we're not gonna do everyone on Facebook. We're using one of our audiences, right? Now it'll automatically pull in all your saved audiences that you have. If you didn't have a large enough list, you might've done a lookalike audience here, which would make that easier. Now I'm gonna just do site visitors from the last 180 days just to show you guys. We also have email list here too. 
So you know what? Let's do email list just to show you. Okay. So now that we've uploaded those, right now we're going to get information on about 22,000 active users on Facebook. Now this is important because this will kind of show us who we should be targeting in our Facebook ads. So as you guys can see, 71% of the visitors are women, 29% are men. So in that case, what we would do is make a lot of our campaigns allocated towards women. We want to make it more female centric. We want to make sure that we use a lot of imagery that promotes women, especially women of power, with, uh, parents as well, because that works really well. That resonates well with a lot of users. Now we know that most of our marketing budget needs to be allocated towards 71% of women. Now, if I scroll down a little bit more, it gives us the lifestyle breakdown of these people. Now, what I usually do is hit selected audience. It'll bring the highest lifestyle person at the top. And then I'm going to click this I and it'll show that most of the users are single parents containing affluent single parents. So that's awesome. So it's white collar professional. Now, what does that tell us? Right. 71 percent are women and then nine percent or one out of ten of those people are affluent single moms. Right. So that means that they have money to spend. That means that they spend money online. I need to start allocating my resources towards those individuals. So when you go ahead and you make your Facebook ads, I might want to segment them mostly for women in that case. Now, page likes, this is really cool stuff. This will show us the top categories of pages that a lot of the people in our group follow. So why is this important? It's important because for example, painting with a twist has nothing to do with this client. This client is a medical uh, facility. However, since a lot of people on this page share affinity towards painting with a twist, we might want to do a campaign geared towards those individuals, or we might want to throw an event around that, right? So it gives us some ideas and things that we could do based on the people that are coming to the website. Also, and this one is really important. I go to page likes and then I'll actually go to organize it by affinity. So this is how likely your audience is to like a given page compared to everyone on Facebook. So a lot of these people are going to like painting with a twist, city of Homestead government, Nosberry farm. I mean, the affinity is really high, so we can actually create campaigns going after the people that like these pages, even though it's not a direct correlation to what this client provides. For some reason, a lot of people in that list have an affinity towards these different things. Now, let's also look at location. So the location, of course, is Miami, Florida and Homestead. Those are the biggest areas of where they're located. That tells us that we're focusing and we're actually looking at the correct individuals. Now, in some cases, you might have some tri-county campaigns, campaigns that go after West Palm and, and Fort Lauderdale and Miami. I'm, I'm talking from South Florida. <laughs> but as you can see, Homestead and Miami have that largest selected audience. So we might want to create some campaigns that focus our efforts there. Now, in regards to activity, this shows the type of activity that the individuals in this list perform. A lot of them are on mobile. Of course, mobile is beating out desktop right now. And then most of them are using iPhones. OK, great data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just collecting this all in my head and then we're going to go through an ideal ad campaign that we can use. Now, when I go to household, I can see that the household income average is between 50,000 and 100,000. Right. So not extremely affluent, but they definitely have enough money to uh, to spend. You can also see the household size is one to three is the biggest ratio here. And then we can also take a look at their spending methods. A lot of them use their bank cards or like a debit or a credit card. Now, lastly, is purchase data. This tells us how much retail spending they're doing how many online purchases they make with 39%. That's extremely high. So a lot of these users actually buy their products online. Now, if I go to purchase behavior, a lot of these people buy food and drink, subscription services, clothing, and et cetera. Right? So this is actually a breakdown of people visiting the website. So let's say I wanted to make a general ad focusing or targeting these individuals. What I would do is create a segmented ad for women, that are single moms affluent, making making a pretty good money. I'd also do a segmented ad of women that were married. Now, what I would also do is go after specific page likes. I'd maybe do a campaign targeting some of these. 
and then locations would be Homestead. I pull all the zip codes and then Miami, Florida. I pull the zip codes there as well and probably focus my efforts in those areas. Activity, I would probably do strictly mobile ads for iPhone, anything iOS 5 and above. In regards to household, I'd go after individuals that made between 50 and maybe 120,000 because that's the biggest demo. Also, most likely go after homeowners since that's about 60%. And then take a look at spending methods. I probably wouldn't do anything with that yet because we don't want to go too specific with Axiom data. But overall, that gives me kind of a consensus of who I should go after. So lastly, if your audience is too small, let's see it's 20 or 30 people, you don't really have enough data, you can do a lookalike audience. And that's done by going into audiences. Once your email list is updated, it'll be listed here. All you need to do is click highlight actions. Oh, it might, let, might not let me do a lookalike. Sorry, let's do it here. 5-4 email list, right? We're going to hit actions, create lookalike audience. And then what you want to do is choose United States or wherever you're targeting. And then you can actually have an audience up to 10%, which is insane. So 1% is about 2.1 million people, 2% is 4.2 million, and so forth. And then you can create segments as well. So it'll create three segments for you based on 1, 1 to 2%, and 2 to 5%. Now, what this does is Facebook will go out and look at the attributes of your existing 20 people, try and match that up with as many people as possible and provide you with a more robust detailed list. So that will give you kind of a general idea of who you're targeting and who to go after. So that's it guys. I just wanted to be really quick. I'm going to recap this again. So you guys fully understand the process. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. So one up late, upload your email list to audiences. So it's available in insights. Remember that can take 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, to complete. Then you're going to use that audience to assess different things like demographics, page affinity, location, activity, and so forth. You're going to go ahead and create your segmented audiences and test. And then if the data is too small, you can use lookalike audiences to fill the gap and then rinse and repeat. Thank you guys for watching our video. I know it's been a while. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We try to provide consistent content that anyone can implement step-by-step -step process. I appreciate you watching the video. Peace.